history of BPH? Um, uh, natural history of BPH um, uh, supported by the Paul study, which included around uh, 800 patients, and they found that uh, patients who be managed by watchful waiting, 40% uh, of them stayed the same, around 30% uh, symptoms got worse, and around um, uh, 25 to 30% of them symptoms got better. The incidence of uh, acute renal retention in those cohorts was around 10%, and sorry, 2%, and the risk of, uh, of those who needed surgery in the future about 10%. So how will you predict a patient may progress or may remain stable? Um, the risk of progression that comes evident from the uh, OMSET counter study and some drugs uh, study like MTOPS and PLES um, uh, and they found that the risk of pro the predictors uh, age greater than 70 uh, um, uh, severe uh, lower tract symptoms, uh, IPSS score greater than 12 uh, uh, Qmax less than 15, postwood residual greater than um, uh, 50, uh, process size of greater than 30 cc, and P PSA of greater than 1.4. Okay. Um, so how are you going to manage this patient? Let us assume we are continuing the same patient from the previous scenario. Uh, I will counsel him uh, initially on the conservative management advice, as previously mentioned. I will su uh, support that with a bowel inflammation leaflet on uh, conservative management of lower tract symptoms. Uh, I will invite him back uh, after uh, the counseling in about six weeks' time with uh, repeat uh, flow rate assessment, both with residual IPSS and bladder diary. And I will assess his symptoms accordingly and talk to him about further management if needed. Okay, we have discussed the flow rate already. Uh, the Qmax is only like 8 ml per second with restrial urine of uh, 150 ml and voided volume of 350 ml and obstructive pattern. What is your next step? Uh, my next step, I will um, counsel him about uh, medical uh, treatment if he has not responded to conservative measures. Uh, my initial uh, 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 line will be starting on alpha blockers. Uh, uh, my uh, preferable uh, uh, drug will be uh, tamsulosin, selected alpha-1 um, uh, uh, blockers. I will counsel him about uh, the, uh, the dosing, about the side effects, in particular uh, risk of posterior hypertension, risk of rhinitis, uh, risk of uh, uh, retrograde ejaculation, uh, uh, risk of intraoperative uh, floppy eye syndrome if he is undergoing a trans surgery. Um, I will also counsel him about uh, potential uh, combination therapy uh, as he is uh, having already risk of progression with process size and uh, of uh, 30 he will be a candidate for combination therapy but given the side effects of uh, uh, the the therapy inhibitors I will start initially on monotherapy I will invite him back again in about four to six weeks time if he does not respond on um, uh, the monotherapy, I will uh, initiate the combination therapy. Um, I will counsel him about uh, the, the, the risk, uh, side effects of the phosphatidylactase inhibitors, in particular, risk of impotence, risk of uh, uh, ED, risk of uh, gynecomastia, and breast tenderness, and DRASH. Uh, the benefit of the combination therapy uh, uh, evidence comes from the COMBAT and the MTOPS study, which found that the, the risk of uh, clinical progression and risk of needing of surgery decreased by 60 to 80 percent in uh, three or four, three to four years uh, follow-up of, of that uh, cohort concluded in that study. Is there any group of patients where you'll be happy to start the combination directly? Uh, those patients who have um, uh, uh, PSF greater than 1.4 and uh, process size greater than uh, um, 30 uh, cc will be a candidate of, of combination therapy directly, uh, providing they have been counseled appropriately about the sexual side effect of both drugs. Do you know any study which uh, done on the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors? Um, uh, I'm aware about the BLESS uh, study, which uh, uh, is a, a study 
uh, on the finasteride, the Proscar, uh, and it was found that the clinical risk of uh, progression, uh, risk of uh, needing surgery has decreased uh, to uh, 55 to 57 percent. Uh, any other study other than EMTOPS which supports the combination treatment? Uh, there is the COMBAT study, uh, which um, again concluded that uh, the clinical risk progression and risk of needing surgery has decreased uh, to uh, by 60 to, to, to 80 percent on the group. Okay, so when are you going to review this patient? Um, uh, once I, if, if, if he started on uh, monotherapy, I will invite him back in about four to six weeks' time, and then every six to 12 months accordingly. If he started on uh, combination therapy, I will see him back in about uh, four to six months, and then every six to 12 months afterwards. Okay. You are seeing this patient in, say, three months' time. He had some improvement in his urinary stream, and also the hesitancy symptoms improved, but his urgency symptoms and the nocturia where he is getting up twice in the night has no change. What will be your next step? You started him on both tamsulosin and finasteride. Um, I will uh, review his uh, 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 blood diary uh, to uh, assess his uh, blood functional capacity and uh, how many times uh, a, uh, uh, during the night, he is uh, getting up and uh, assess if he does have uh, any um, evidence of uh, nocturnal uh, uh, polyuria, and that's by calculating his urine output uh, during the night over the 24 hours period. Uh, I will assess if uh, from the symptoms he does have uh, a combined storage uh, uh, lot symptoms. Uh, to see if he will benefit uh, from adding uh, additional medications such as anticholinergic or beta-3 agonist. How will you decide that his nocturnal polyuria is significant? Uh, nocturnal polyuria um, uh, defined as uh, uh, urine, uh, uh, nocturnal uh, urine output exceeding 33% uh, 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 during the night over the 24 hours period in a man of uh, age greater than 65. Okay. Uh, is there any different value for young people? Uh, yes. In young uh, adults, uh, it was um, uh, thought to be around 20%. So the nocturnal polyuria index uh, 0.2 for young and 0.33 for uh, elderly. Okay. Um, you have calculated this nocturnal polyuria. It came around 26 and um, you have advised him various lifestyle changes. What medications you are going to start for him? Um, I will assess uh, if, the, uh, if he does have any comorbidities or risk factors, uh, such as obstructive sleep apnea, any uh, congestive heart failure or renal failure, and, 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 and see if there is any directed uh, management towards that. Uh, one of the medical uh, 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 management options I will counsel him about is adding uh, an antimuscarinic, uh, such as uh, solafinacin, 5 to 10 milligrams, uh, after I counsel him about the side effects, uh, or uh, uh, mirobegrin at 50 milligrams, ensuring he is not allergic to it and there is no contraindication, such as uncontrolled hypertension, renal or hepatic failure. Um, uh, other uh, medical treatment options also can be included, uh, the vasopressin, which is synthetic analog of uh, ADH, uh, but will also ensure uh, that his, uh, he does have a baseline of uh, sodium and his sodium is being monitored at one and four weeks. Okay. Uh, any studies to support the use of anticholinergics in men with LUTS? Uh, yes, uh, that comes from the uh, uh, Neptune study and the TAMS study. The Neptune study looked at the tamsulosin and solafinacin. It's Neptune 1 and Neptune 2. And it was found that uh, the, at the end of the study of one year, uh, the combination is well tolerated and improved IPSS parameters and uh, quality of life. Uh, tam the TAMS study looked at the tamsulosin and tolteridine, and again, it was found that it does improve the IPSS parameters, uh, but does not improve the Qmax. Okay, your time's up now. We'll finish with one question. 
any contraindication to start anticholinergics in these patients? Uh, a contraindication, uh, 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 I will, um, yeah, if he does have a history of uh, my uh, thenic gravis, uh, if he uh, having any allergies to, to, to the medication, if he does have a, a large uh, post void residual, uh, and the side effects, which include um, uh, dry eyes, dry mouth, constipations, and risk of cognitive uh, impairment okay. of prolonged use. Yeah, when you are discussing the side effects of anticholinergics or contraindications, you can generally discuss everything what you say even for female urology. Like for example, open angle glaucoma, any bubble oui. diseases, constipation, uh, sometimes they may be having like a pseudo distended colon or irritable bowel disease like Crohn's disease. They can also cause plenty of bowel related symptoms. And uh, the few things as a feedback is in the ball study, the number of men is 107. You mentioned around 400. These things are not important, but I'm just covering them since you are good in presentation. I thought I will just help you to make it more finer adjustments. Yeah, and um, for making a patient into a significant LUTS, the QMAX is less than 12. I think you mentioned 15, I think, if I'm correct. Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah. side effects of uh, fire alpha reductase inhibitors, libido, lack of libido is very, very oh, important. Yeah. Uh, I think you mentioned about erectile dysfunction, but not lack of libido. It's good that you mentioned both the studies, times and Neptune 1, Neptune 2 for supporting the use of uh, anticholinergics and uh, the nocturnal polyuria index is 33 percent normally for younger men it's 20 percent that's quite good at that any other thing you want to share in this scenario before we go for the next one uh no i think yeah we we discussed uh, we had a very good discussion mm -hmm. uh we talked about nocturnal polyuria and nocturia as well uh we touch because uh, it could be could be either could be voiding could be storage so uh it, it's it's a good uh, good scenario to discuss both management options so have uh, open mind what yeah. what the scenario can you know can lead to so it's uh, you know, it's very good very good feedback thank you Mr. yeah in this scenario you can get even men with uh, solitary storage luts so again it's the same thing without tamsulosin and finasteride you will be uh, prescribing and sometimes it will be like a mixer LUTS with uh, the warding symptoms improved but the storage symptoms are still continuing in spite of lifestyle changes. If the patient presents with mixer LUTS try to give tamsulosin and if there are indications try to add finasteride to start with because they themselves will resolve the storage LUTS because the storage LUTS may be due to bladder overactivity which is secondary to bladder outlet obstruction even though we are not doing appropriate uh, urodynamics. But uh, yeah. once the tamsulosin and finasteride were given for an adequate at least like three months time then um, yeah. it's op appropriate to start anticholinergics. Anticholinergics are contraindicated if the PVR is more than 150 as per the time study. Regarding the follow-up if you follow the NICE guidelines for both alpha blockers and anticholinergics nice guidelines mentions the clinic follow-up in four to six weeks and for fire productase inhibitors especially finasteride it mentions like three to six months yeah. but in general you can mention the nhs practice of first follow-up in three months time for everything and then yeah. maybe for finasteride you can see them in six months and then one year but for tamsulosin, you can see them again in six months. And if they are doing fine, you can even discharge them. They are all benign conditions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.